movement of organic solids in the tissues of a young shoot sibling is also an example of active transport. Also, salt accumulation within the cell. You know, we said it's, a, it's from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration. So, those are the examples of active transport. Now, we are moving on to the last part of the theme one, of biology for essence one. So, we will be talking about some properties and functions of cell. Some properties and functions of cell. That was the last part. We talked about many things about the cell. The cell itself, the history, the plant and the animal cell, the differences, the activities that happen in the cell. So, the properties and the function of cell, that's what we're talking about now. And some of the properties of the cell that we're talking about, first, I'll be describing growth and development. We're talking about growth and development as a function of the cell. You know, I said earlier that when we, in mentioning the characteristics of living things, growth was there. So, as a function of the cell, now I want to describe the growth. Growth, what happens? How does growth occur? Growth refers to the qualitative increase in bulk, which can be measured, such as size, mass. Qualitative increase in bulk, quality. That is what you can see. Increase that has happened, that can be seen and measured, such as the size of a thing and the mass. While development is the qualitative changes, this one is not measurable. There are no measurable features, such as the change in shape or of a part, or the emergence of a new part. You can measure that, that the shape of a particular leaf has changed from ovates to obovates. You can measure that, even though it is a change that has occurred. So, growth can be measured. That's a basic difference I want you to note. Growth can be measured, while development cannot be measured, though it can be seen. It's a qualitative change, while growth is a qualitative increase in bulk. Growth and development are used interchangeably. They are very, very similar, but they are different. And that is the difference that I've just shown you now. Growth refers to qualitative increase. Increase in bulk, that is features which can be measured, such as size and mass. The size, for instance, the weight of a rat after five weeks, if the rat is being fed well, will be different from its weight after three months. That is growth that has occurred. But by the time you discover in your rat that it can now run around, unlike when it was two weeks old, that it was just the movement was minimal, it was just in the cage. That is a development that has occurred. You can't measure that. There's no way you can measure and tell me that, okay, now that the animal has mo started moving, it's now more active than it used to be. So that is development. That's just the difference between growth and development. Development involves cell division, cell enlargement, cell specialization, and arrangement of the cells within the organism. Hence, development is a cellular phenomenon. Development is what happens in the cell. That's what we mean by cellular phenomenon. A phenomenon that occurs in the cell. I said cell enlargement, cell division, cell specialization, then arrangement of the cell. So it's everything about the cell. Growth is an irreversible increase in size and weight brought about by assimilation of food to provide necessary energy and materials to make new protoplasm within the body of the organism. Growth is an irreversible increase in size and weight. It cannot be reversed, no matter what. Because a, a, a child is not fed well, that has grown to about three feet tall, we don't reduce the height of that child. That is what we call growth. 
even though some other things might be reduced, but it will not be reversed in such an individual. So an irreversible increase in size and weight, which has happened because of assimilation of food, person has been feeding or the animal has been fed, the result of that assimilation of food is the irreversible increase in size and weight that is called growth. Then, for growth to occur, anabolism must be greater than catabolism. For growth to occur, anabolism must be greater than catabolism. Anabolism is the rate of building up of materials, while catabolism is the opposite, the rate of breaking down of materials. The rate at which materials is built up by an organism undergoing growth must exceed the rate at which it is being broken down. That is a criteria for growth to occur. Now, the basis of growth. I said earlier that growth development is a cellular phenomenon. Now, basis of growth, we will be talking about cell division, cell enlargement, cell differentiation. So, we will talk about them one by one. Cell division brings about an increase in the number of cells. And in the earlier class, we have talked about the two cellular division that we have, the mitosis and the meiosis. We've talked and explained the phases. You remember PMATS, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. We talked about that. So you go to check back on that to refresh your memory. Now we talk about cell enlargement. After the cell has been divided, the vacuoles take up water by osmosis. We've also talked about osmosis. So we are building up on what we are learning gradually. So cell enlargement involves the vacuolated cells taking up water by osmosis and expanding. This is a kind of expansion or what we call enlargement that happens after cells have taken up water. So the cell become enlarged in size and in mass after cell division. So cell division occurs first, then we have cell enlargement. Then the next process is cell differentiation. Differentiation is that the cells become modified to perform specialized function. After the cell has divided and now has expanded or enlarged, it now becomes specified or modified, it becomes specialized or modified to produce different kind of cells that make up various tissues and organ of the organism, you know. In arrangements of the cell, you have aggregate of cell becoming tissues, aggregate of tissue becoming organs, then aggregate of organs, we have system. And you have uh, your, the various kind of system that we have in the animal body, you have the uh, digestive system, the circulatory system, respiratory system, and give all kinds of system that we have. But the cells that form, that gather themselves together to form tissue and organs, that perform the system, the digestive system, will definitely be different from the same type of the cells that perform excretion, that is in the excretory system. So the cells become differentiated. They are all the same from the beginning. Mitosis and meiosis occur, the cell divides and increase in number then the cells, they are still the same, become enlarged. Okay, let me use this example to analyze what I'm saying presently. For instance, all of you came into school, into your school in GSS1, or we have GSS1 students, we have 100 students in GSS1. GS1, A, B, C, and D, all of them, they are GS1. They all move to GS2, they all move to GS3. By the time they get to SS1, there will be specialization. Some people will say, oh, we want to go to the, we want, we want to, they now become the science students. Okay, let's say out of those 100 students, you have 25 or let's say 30 that are science students. Then we have another 35 that are art students. Then we have the third, the second 35 that are commercial students. You know, even though they are all SS1 students and they started as GS1 students in the same school, by the time they are finishing from the school, they have been made different. They have become specialized. So you have them 
talking about somebody who will be vast, so vast in talking about physics, chemistry, talking about sciences. Another person will be thinking, is thinking will be tailored towards accounts, talking about economics and things like that. Why the other person will be talking about literature, what happens in nature and relating it in different ways, even though they are all human beings and they came to the school together at the same time from GSS1, but they have become specialized. So this is the same thing that happens with cell, back to biology. So cell differentiation, the cells become differentiation, differentiated or modified to produce different types of cells that make up various tissues and organs of the organism. The cell performs specialized or particular function. They don't now perform the same thing, just like those students. They, they don't perform the same function anymore. So those are the, that's the basis of growth, cell division, cell enlargement, and cell differentiation. Now we move on to talk about the roots and stem of apical meristem. Still talking about growth. But now we are tailoring it to plants. Mary stems are the regions where growth takes place in plants. The regions where you have growth taking place in plants is called Mary stem. And it's found at the stem apex, that is the tip of the stem, the root tip, the root just behind the root cap. Those are the places that you find growth occurring fast. So that's why we call them the meristem. The meristem is the region of actively dividing cells. At those points, the apex of the stem and the root.